Mind Matter Interaction A Case of Potential Misconduct I would like to produce scientific evidence for mind matter interaction. I got it. I'll run a double slit diffraction experiment. A participant will mentally focus on the laser beam striking the double slit attempting to affect the diffraction pattern of laser light. And reduce the sharpness of diffraction fringes. To set up the experiment, I need a laser beam. A double slit. A slide, with two closely spaced narrow slits. A camera. To digitize the intensity of diffracted light. Coming from the central diffraction band. And send the signal to be plotted. by a computer. With appropriate software to convert the digitized diffraction pattern. Into a fast Fourier transform power spectrum. Some features of the spectrum are fixed. Determined by the fixed parameters of the setup in the double slit experiment. Fixed is the frequency fk of the peak. Also, fixed is the unit of frequencies. And the power. P1 at frequency 1 unit. However, the height, pk, of the peak varies with the sharpness of the fringes. If the fringe sharpness decreases, then the power at the peak will decrease. From pk to pk prime. The computer registers any change in fringe sharpness through the ratio R, PK by P1. A decreased PK yields decrease in R, since P1 stays constant. Decrease in R during periods of mental effort sands as evidence for mind matter interaction. Let us look at our experimental results. No change in parameter R was observed. No evidence for mind-matter interaction. Oh, well. We can still claim plenty of evidence to support our hypothesis. Just watch. <laughs> If PK, and therefore R, did not decrease during the test, will decrease, R, artificially. What? By increasing, its denominator P1. No! Naturally, P1, stays constant in the Fourier spectrum. So, we'll program the computer to plot a false new spectrum, sliding the real one to the right. Unbelievable! The shift will be tiny. 
one frequency unit at maximum. Now, the computer will read P1 and PK at the new position of the spectrum, at frequency units, 1, and the new frequency of the peak. Notice. During the next minute, the video will present explanatory readings, on the power spectrum. You may skip this part. But do stay. It is fun. The power at the peak is 10 to the minus 7.25. The power at one unit of frequency is 10 to the minus 7. The measure, R, is then, 0 0.56. It relates to 75% fringe contrast. We shift the spectrum, by one frequency unit, to the right. The power at the peak, is still 10 to the minus 7.25. The power at one unit of frequency, is now increased, to 10 to the minus 6.44. The measure, R, becomes 0 0.16. It decreased. It relates to 39% fringe contrast. The spectrum shift, reduced, R, artificially by 71%, providing false evidence for mind-matter interaction. Many more reduced, R, are possible for a range of spectrum shifts, less than one unit of frequency. We claim that the peak occurs at the shifted position, FK plus 1. 64.6, instead of the initial 63.6 units of frequency in this example. No one will notice the shifted spectrum, with its gap near zero frequency. The gap is almost invisible. True. The new peak at its shifted position, no longer agrees, with the experimental parameters. No worries. No one will notice. Academics trained in laser optics, will not waste time checking our experimental setup, its parameters, and the accuracy of our published double-slit experiment graphs. Interested investigators, will only focus on the statistics of our appropriately treated results. Our actions are justified, as they offer comfort, to the believers. An important statement, as the video is coming to an end. After presenting a comprehensive description of potential scientific misconduct, it is important to remember that Science, is the continuous search for truth. Truth Otherwise, it is, not, science.